Joining us now, Dallas Attorney Pete Schulte, former McKinney police officer, currently a reserve deputy in Bryan College Station. Pete, what is your reaction to what we've seen so far? Well, I'll kind of use the term that we use in situations like this. I and mean, This was clearly a good shoot by the Holland Park police officers. They assessed a threat. The threat was real. They used their firearm, and the suspect was killed. So the grand jury did the right thing today, and the officers, when they got faced with a deadly conduct situation, did the right thing. We've got several looks at the takedown. Let's start with what happened when the second officer arrives on the scene and describe for us what you're seeing. Basically, they're trying to get the suspect off the alleged stolen bicycle, the motorcycle, mm -hmm. which is important because you don't want a suspect to be mobile. So he was struggling with the first officer. The second officer, who's obviously a backup unit, arrives. You can see them struggling here, trying to get the person off the bike and get him into handcuffs. And obviously, we know at some point during that struggle, he was pepper sprayed. Uh, and that was all fine. I mean, that was in proper training. They needed to use force to get him off the motorcycle. Okay, and the next piece of video is going to show the cell video that was shot from a driver across the street. Different perspective. Yeah, this is interesting, though, as we, we talked about earlier before the show, is that this is the sign of the times. I mean, everybody has a video on their cell phone. This is showing that they finally got the suspect somewhat under control. They're putting him in handcuffs, and they're trying to keep him down. It looks like if they probably didn't have their knee in his back, he would be struggling with them continually still. So this is where they initially got him under control and in handcuffs. Okay, so so far, your assessment? So far, so good. I mean, they, they had a combative individual uh, that was potentially a felon uh, that was driving or had stolen a, a motorcycle earlier in the day, and they needed to get him into custody and get him under control. Okay, let's go inside the dash cam, inside the police car. Now, he is in handcuffs behind his back. Right, and you can see as he's getting into the squad car, the officer who is assisting him getting into the squad car is doing a cursory search. And I, I don't know if I would even call it a search at this point. Uh, he's actually using his hands, and you can see him going into the right pocket pretty detailed. But at some point, he reaches over to the other side and, for some reason, uh, does not search the suspect's left pocket. And look at his arm, because that arm is, is really pretty low right now. Right, it, and he's obviously in handcuffs, and again, he's either sitting on his arms or he is, and so there's, and right the, there. there's yeah. where the, uh, the, the supervisor's reaching over, uh, does not go into the left pocket, which was a mistake. I mean, that happens a lot when we're dealing with suspects. And see, right now, he has got his hands in front of him. He's got a towel in his hand, and the first thing he's going to pull out is, like, his phone. But that's not what he wants. No, and he's using the towel to try to hide the officers that are probably standing out the door at this very moment. All right, right now we're going to see him pull out the gun, and there it is right there. Let's listen. You want to back up? Okay, that was the gunshot. He shot him. He had to because in squad cars, the child locks are on. The suspect cannot get out of the car by using the door handle. So. He knew that he had to use a weapon or some sort of object to get through the window. Okay, now we're going to see a reverse angle. This is from across the street from the dash cam. And we saw that officer who ran around the back of that car. Let's right. listen. There you see the window get shot out. You see him jumping. Obviously, it was loud enough for the officers to hear the gunshots. But at this point, I know that there was some question very early on that last June when this happened, whether or not the suspect actually pointed the gun at the officers. I don't think it really matters. It, it matter. really doesn't matter. He was shown that he was capable of using the firearm and at this point officers reacted and I think they acted appropriately. Deadly force. Deadly force was authorized, absolutely. All right, one more time we're gonna look inside the squad car. This is from the police dash cam. And it, you gotta search somebody when they're standing up outside the car, right? That's correct. I'll tell you what the number one of the number one reasons why officers get hurt or killed is for not searching suspects by putting them before they put them in the back of the squad car. It happens. Uh, you know, I worked this last weekend as a reserve down in Bryan College Station. I had patted down a suspect that I arrested, and I remember putting him in the back of the squad car, and I hadn't done a thorough search. I think it, you don't think you perceive a threat, and you don't go all the way through and follow your training, and that's very common. So as you see what the search is going on here, this is a good training video because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there weren't cameras in the back of squad cars to be able to show officers why we do what we do and this is one of the classic reasons of why searches need to be done but look at when he fires that weapon you still got cars going by him right there that could have hit somebody it's correct i mean they the, everyone was very lucky being in that very crowded area of mockingbird and airlines right by central expressway yeah. all the shops 
Uh, very lucky. The officers obviously had good aim that they didn't go beyond the suspect. Uh, but that was a, you know, you always kind of wonder if they had found the gun sooner, mm -hmm. could, this, could the situation have been more contained? I'm not going to second guess these officers. They obviously are going to learn from their mistake that they missed the gun, but it's common. Officers are human. They're going to make mistakes. But overall, I think they did a, they did a good job and they did the right thing. We're going to take one more look. We're going to see the officer running around the front of the car. And okay. we're going to take a listen to hear what was happening at that, that point. Okay. Yeah, again, I mean, that gun was so small, it's not like it's a full-size Glock or something like that that would have been obvious if at the time that they shot the suspect, at the time that he, you know, fell to the ground, that gun could have kicked over and it could have been visible. So, again, it's a it's an adrenaline rush. The officers are, are judged on what they knew at the time mm -hmm. deadly force was used. Obviously, it was clear that gunshots had been fired, that a suspect was trying to run. At that point, he was a fleeing felon. So I think none of that is going to put any question, on my opinion, that the officers did exactly what they needed to do. So thankful the officers and civilians were safe that day. That's correct. I think they did a good job. Pete, thank you very much for Absolutely. running. Thanks for having that. me.